Hey, what's going on guys? Alex here with TFL Bike with some exciting BMW news today. An all new model, we have all the details, pricing, pictures, video, everything you need to know about the all new BMW CE02. And it's just me today, cause Case is out uh, in Oklahoma testing some Honda side-by-sides. So we'll have some stuff with that on TFL Off-Road very soon, but for now, Let's go and give you the rundown on this all new BMW CE02. So clearly BMW is getting into this electric scooter market. We already did some coverage on the CE04, which debuted about two years ago, and that's the much bigger brother to this CE02. Um, so that CE04 is somewhat similar in terms of design, very futuristic design, all electric powertrain, you know, somewhere between a motorcycle and a scooter. But that one is way heavier, uh, made for longer distances. This looks to be a really fun looking city bike. And yeah, let's uh, get right into it. So first of all, is it a motorcycle? Is it a scooter? What do they call it? BMW says it's neither. They call it an e parkourer which is one of the weirdest names I've ever heard. Um, I think it's, you know, pretty similar to a scooter. Uh, you're not going to operate a clutch or anything. Most electric bikes are like that. Um, and, you know, it still has some motorcycle design elements to it. You still step over this bike and not through it. It's not a pass-through design like a scooter. So, yeah, I'd say it's closer to a motorcycle than a scooter. They call it an e-parkour whatever. <laughs> anyway, moving on to the style, because that's uh, what I think this bike is really all about, is the way it looks. Clearly a very futuristic design. This is a bike that if you parked it pretty much anywhere, people you can guarantee are going to walk up to you asking you about it. Um, it just looks very futuristic and it has some really cool looking components on it. So two different flavors they're offering it in um, to start for the first year. You have an all black base model or there's the much cooler looking, in my opinion, Highline version. Uh, and we'll get to what else comes with the Highline version besides just style in a little bit. Um, but the Highline version, still a, a black bike at the heart of it, but you get some more accent colors thrown in, especially on the battery. You have some teal and white accents. You get uh, a teal and white and black seat as well. And then gold anodized forks on the Highline version as well. So really sweet looking bike. Uh, LED lighting all the way around. Um, has a really cool look to it up front. You have a very kind of a flat geometric looking windscreen um, and even the tires are really cool looking they have a sort of geometric pattern to the tread and you've got a single-sided swing arm solid looking wheels which is really unique and cool so yeah from pretty much every angle I've seen this thing the the style of it just looks really really rad even like the rear shock um, has this cool futuristic looking cover on it so they're doing a good job kind of hiding some components, showing off other ones. It's got a cool pass-through design um, in the hump of the seat where your traditional gas tank would be to kind of show you that, hey, this isn't powered by um, traditional fuel. So yeah, I think they absolutely nailed the design. Again, especially in that Highline version, it looks so good. 14-inch wheels all the way around, so um, definitely a little bit of a smaller machine. I'd really like to get up close and personal with one of these and see how it compares in size to, you know, a full-size motorcycle or a mini moto like the Honda Monkey I have. So, yeah, there's pretty much the style, and it looks really cool, but let me know what you think down in the comments below. All right, now let's move on to some of the specs, and here in the United States, we're only going to get one uh, motor configuration, but for some other countries where you have different license classifications, there will be lower-powered versions available for the different licenses license types, but here in the U.S. we only get the most powerful one, which is uh, makes 11 kilowatts of peak power, and it's powered by a 3.92 kilowatt hour battery pack. Makes 15 horsepower and 40.5 foot-pounds of torque, and that's going to give you a total max range of 56 miles and a top speed of 59 miles per hour. So clearly a city bike, you know, 56 miles of range is plenty enough to get you around most cities, um, but if you live kind of far outside of the city, it might not be enough to get you there. So if you live in a city um, or near a city, probably plenty enough range for you. 
Um, especially the top speed too, you know, being on 14 inch wheels front and back, probably not going to want to go a whole lot faster than 60, maybe 70 miles an hour. So, uh, 59 mile per hour top speed that doesn't bother me at all. Uh, so yeah, I think not bad specs at all. Something interesting is it does have a reverse gear, an electric reverse gear. This is a belt drive bike. It's not a particularly heavy bike at 291 pounds. And it doesn't have a particularly high seat height either at 29 inches. So this isn't going to be a hard bike to creep backwards for most people. So a little interesting that you have that reverse gear, but nevertheless, it is there. And then as far as charging goes, um, standard is going to be a 0.9 kilowatt charger. Uh, and it is an external charger. So a brick that you plug into the wall and then plug the other end into the bike. So you need to have that charger with you. It's not built into the, the bike itself. But you can get an optional quick charger that bumps it from 900 watts or 0.9 kilowatts up to 1.5 kilowatts. Um, so you could really cut down on your charging time. Standard charging just off 120 volt with the slow charger is going to be about two hours and 40 minutes to get you from 20 to 80 percent and then of course to top it from 80 to 100 always takes a lot longer so two hours 40 minutes from 20 to 80. so again this is a bike that pretty much anywhere you take it you're going to want to make sure you're within 56 miles round trip because this is a bike you're going to want to charge at home um, with the slow charging times and especially with the charger being an external charging unit some of the other components on this bike it does have disc brakes front and rear it's a single-sided disc up front but you do get uh, two piston caliper which is pretty nice and you do have ABS at the front wheel as well so um, you know you could skid the back out a little if you wanted to since there's no ABS in the rear but I think ABS in the front is a great addition especially for a bike you're going to be riding around in cities and we all know what it's like to ride in a city. You have to do panic stops every once in a while. And this is a bike that maybe some less experienced riders would get on. Um, so yeah, uh, glad to see it has ABS in the front. I'm always uh, a huge fan of that on street bikes. You do have inverted forks up front and a adjustable rear shock as well. So decent suspension on it. And then moving on to the tech package, We'll start with the TFT display because this is one of the coolest looking dashboards I've seen on really any bike. It's a 3.5 inch micro TFT display. It's real small, but again, really futuristic looking, really matches the style of the bike. And I say this all the time, BMW does some of the best screens and infotainment systems in the motorcycle industry. And this looks to be a really cool unit. I'm interested to play around with it and see how that screen size actually translates to usability. Um, but just from the style design standpoint of the dash, it looks really cool. You do have keyless ride as well, option for phone connectivity. So you can connect to your phone and get you know navigation and music control and all that kind of stuff. Two riding modes standard as well, surf and flow, which is really just kind of a fancy way of saying city and sport. So surf mode is, um, you know, going to be for kind of improving your, uh, your range and just kind of coasting from light to light. And then your flow mode is if you really kind of want to get into it, take it on some twisty roads. Let's move on to the Highline package that I mentioned at the start of the video. So like I said, it brings the all black model, gives it some more flair, more color, gold forks, um, different seat with some different colors, and then some graphics on the side of the bike around the battery as well. But there's a few other things you get besides the color scheme. You also get heated grips. Um, you get a smartphone mount that you can, you know, just put your phone right on the, the handlebar there. You get a third riding mode as well, which is a flash mode is what they call it. So even sportier than the other ones um, that you get on the standard bike. And then you also get the quick charger standard. So um, the base bike, the all black one, comes with the standard 0.9 kilowatt charger. You can upgrade the base model to get the 1.5 kilowatt hour charger, or you can get the 1.5 kilowatt hour charger with going with the Highline package. So yeah, there's pretty much everything you need to know. I really would love to get some seat time on one of these. It looks super interesting. I have a lot of questions about it. Um, and I just think it looks like it would be a blast to ride. I love little compact bikes and that's exactly what this is. It's got a cool design, looks retro. 
And uh, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty stoked on it. One of the really interesting design elements that I was looking at is the foot peg positions. So you have a foot peg kind of straight down from where your butt would be on the seat, right by the kickstand there. But there's another one further forward, another set of pegs in this kind of hoop bar that comes out from uh, the front of the motor there. So you have two foot peg positions. They look like you could use uh, either one. You know, you could use the forward control as the rider and kind of make it feel like a cruiser with forward controls, or you can get a little sportier of a position, put your foot on the back pegs, which are a little higher up, further back, and ride it more like a sport machine. I'm also curious, I haven't seen any imagery of two people sitting on this at the same time, riding two up, but the seat looks flat and long. It looks like it's got grab handles at the rear and two sets of pegs. So um, theoretically, you could throw two people on this and cruise around town and get two people where you need to go. So yeah, very cool design, like I keep going back to. That's the standout feature of this bike for me is the way it looks. There's just not many other vehicles on the market that look like this. And yeah, I mean, you're definitely gonna stand out on the road if you pick one of these up. Let's talk about pricing really quick. Base model starts at $8,194, and then you add another $875 to get the Highline package. So if you go for the Highline, that brings the total price just over nine grand to $9,069. Definitely not cheap. You could get a lot of bike, gas-powered bikes, for a lot less money than this that could get you further on a single tank. Um, so yeah, these are pricey, but at the same time, you could very easily spend eight, nine grand on an electric mountain bike that I pretty much can guarantee doesn't have the same build um, or give you the same experience as this BMW CEO 2 would. So yes, expensive, um, but if you start to look at it compared to some of the other two-wheeled options out there, Price doesn't look super bad, but I know it's still gonna be a little steep for some people. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. Would you pay eight, nine grand for one of these? I'm not sure I would yet, but that might change when I get some seat time on it. So I really wanna ride it and I'm hoping we can bring you a full ride review of one of these at some point. But yeah, let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching. Check out alltfl.com so you don't miss anything. We'll catch you in the next video.